Novels are a great source of entertainment. They can make you laugh, they can make you cry, they can continue the adventures of your favourite space and time travelling alien and their human companion. With the TV show off the air, all but cancelled, there weren't particularly many avenues for Doctor Who to continue. Sure, there was the magazine and its comic strips, but uh, comics are for nerds. We're not nerds, we're Doctor Who fans. We read novels like the Giga Chads that we are. In comes Virgin Books or Virgin Publishing to continue the adventures of the Seventh Doctor and Ace for a more mature and older audience in a whole new range of novels titled The New Adventures. And to kick off these new adventures was a four part story centered around a new antagonist, the Time Worm. The first in the series was Time Worm Genesis. And oh boy, it's um, it's not good. It's not particularly a good book. So, starting off, um, the Seventh Doctor and Ace. This is after the events of Survival. I feel like the writer, John Peel, has a basic understanding of the Seventh Doctor and Ace, of their dynamic of, like, a stern professor with a rebellious student. Other than that, I... <laughs> They're weirdly out of character a lot of the time. Yes, they do bicker with each other. They have arguments But in this that is just their dynamic Their the whole dynamic is just they just argue with one another Which is which we know it's that's not what it is. You know, they're, they're constantly making like snide remarks to one another Like with an earshot so they know it's kind of like the whole You say it under your breath you want them to hear it, but you also don't want them to and also they're mean to each other a lot, particularly the Seventh Doctor to Ace. Like, the Seventh Doctor is unwarrantingly mean to Ace a lot of the time. Uh, there's a particular scene where the TARDIS is trying to give the Doctor a message, so it does it in the form of past companions, and the Seventh Doctor to Ace, who's next to him, who's with him at the time, unfavorably compares her to, his, to some of his past companions, saying that they were, like, much better than her. And like to, to simplify it just like oh the, the this companion was more agreeable than you later on in the story when ace uh gives her concerns that the character gilgamesh uh is going to get drunk and have his way with her because he has had some very wandering hands uh towards ace the uh the doctor um hearing ace's concerns says if you're worried about your virtue you could always go back to the tardis I think, you know, the Doctor would show a little bit more compassion and concern uh, that his companion is worried that she might be um, forced upon. Yeah. And also Ace kind of like is also out of character in this. There's a particular scene where uh, she is forced to uh, bathe and wear clothing of uh, yeah, of uh, Mesopotamia of that time, um, and when she is told that the servants have to do this or else Gilgamesh will have them killed, she begrudgingly accepts instead of actually showing, like, much like the doctor with her in this book, showing some compassion or some concern or thought for their uh, kind of a uh, dilemma that they're in. Um, because it still reaches the same conclusion of, um, she doesn't like what she's forced to wear, so she will still wear it, but she will also still wear her jeans as well. Um, but you didn't need Ace to be really just, like I said, begrudgingly accepted and just not given him any thought to the kind of dilemma that these servants are forced into in order to live. Because like I said, if they don't do it, they die. They get killed for it because they're going against... They, it would be seen as them going against the orders of their king. So it's just weird that Ace just shows no compassion as well uh, for them. And then we come to our villain, uh, our antagonist, uh, Kwataka or Ishtar, or the Time Worm. Now, you could argue because this is her origin, there isn't a lot to her as the antagonist because she doesn't become the time worm until the end of the book um but as no Kwataka or Ishtar as I'll refer to her as Ishtar as the villain of this book is not interesting 
much like with the writer's understanding of the Seventh Doctor and Ace, it's bare bones basic as a villain. Um, she comes off as very petty, and not like a good, fun kind of petty, like Black Manta, like having just murdered Aquaman's kid, and which led to the kind of like breaking up of uh, the destruction of like Aquaman's marriage. Black Manta coming back later and being like, hey, how's the wife and kid? <laughs> or, like, reverse Flash. Can't kill Barry Allen, so he just does a lot of, like, mundane stuff to, like, torture him. Like, pushing him down a flight of stairs when he was a kid. Or opening the doors to his house so the dog runs out and is hit by oncoming traffic. Like, that kind of petty. Now, that That's entertaining kind of petty, petty because it's funny of, like, how it's perceived or how they do it with Ishtar it's just like uh Gilgamesh refused to let me embrace him so uh, he's one of my mortal enemies like <laughs> okay that, that doesn't make you a good villain and she, she she really isn't like so as an origin story for this villain for this four-part series it's not a good or origin for her then you come to the characters of Gilgamesh and Akindu. Akindu, I liked. Akindu had more, a bit more of a character. He was interest. He was a bit interesting. Gilgamesh, he's just the simple dumb, dumb muscle guy. Just likes to drink, kill, and have sex. Not anything engaging with Gilgamesh. Um, the story itself was not particularly engaging either. I found it quite boring in a lot of parts, and I legitimately almost fell asleep several times reading this novel. Now, I, I've, I've known from word of mouth that this this novel did not have the best of reputations, and but still, I wanted to go in, go in blank, go in, go in dry, uh, give the old, the fair no fair shake of the the old sauce bottle, and have my own thoughts about it, and yeah. I just found it boring and actually almost fell asleep. The only th kind of like plot arc that I found interesting was the was the the daughter of the king of Kish, uh, Ninani. Her little subplot of like wanting to help destroy Ishtar because she's seeing how uh, it's she's not benefiting uh, Kish, and she's seeing how much it's changed her father who who also who hates Ishtar but just kind of just has to accept that she's there because she's a goddess so like her subplot of trying to like find a way to help destroy Ishtar I at least found that kind like kind of interesting like in some parts but yeah like I, nah, there's not there's not really much I could say about this book uh, but I will give some positives to it. There's some ideas that I liked, like the whole um, Seventh Doctor removing parts of his memories that he f kind of find he finds like useless or that he doesn't need. I feel like that's something the Seventh Doctor would do, um, and it also kind of it, it's a good way of like solving kind of like continuity issues if like the Doctor just doesn't remember it because you know it's Doctor Who, continuity is kind of all over the place sometimes with like certain like aspects so i find it it kind of works i kind of like it as an idea that he just removes part of his memories um and also i like the idea that he can like tap back into previous incarnations if they're like better suited for a situation than he is because um he taps into the uh uh personality of the th of the third doctor to uh, solve a certain scenario and if, but of course you know because it's the third doctor it, john peel couldn't help himself we had to have a uh, reverse the polarity of the neutron flow because if that's the only thing anyone ever really cares about the third doctor if he says that uh, <laughs> you know if, if if he isn't going here he's saying reverse the polarity of the, the neutron flow of course it's the third doctor why wouldn't he um that's only i could the only things i could really give it that i kind of liked about time worm genesis but apart from that it's not it it, def, it definitely isn't it isn't a good book it's not a good story it's not a good introduction 
for essentially this was continuing Doctor Who because the, the, we had no they had no TV show the TV show was cancelled essentially so this was continuing it um, I haven't even touched on like this the, this being for like mature and older audiences that that's just seems to be oh there's more killing and like sex and nudity which again very very familiar theme in this book bare bones basic for the for those themes and if they wanted me to feel uncomfortable because the certain nudity and sex that happens in this is with essentially teenagers and yeah that is uncomfortable what's even more uncomfortable is the fact that the doctor just passes it off as this is the culture of the time you just have to accept it when like ace doesn't like it and rightfully so she doesn't like how gilgamesh acts and what he does and then the doctor just says it's just the culture of the time you just have to accept it time worm genesis not a good start from what I've heard, I think, which is widely agreed upon, is that the next three novels are just much better in comparison, uh, particularly Exodus and Revelation, um, which I should. I think I've got all three novels arriving soon, maybe. Um, so I look forward to those. Hopefully that they definitely are a bit better. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Time Worm Genesis. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I'm delving more into these novels. Um, if you've been keeping up on my uh, Twitter, I've been reading a lot of the past Doctor adventures. I've been really enjoying those. Um, I do have some of the missing adventures as well. And um, I'm also, I will be starting at the time of this uh, recording, I will be starting the eighth Doctor adventures. So um, I don't know. I don't think it would, that would also have a kind of questionable poor start now could it